Hello, wonderful PRA kiddos. This is Mrs. Heal, the tech teacher, and I wanna to talk to you guys today about your email, um, and more importantly, organizing and going through your email every day. So I think it's important to go through your email every single day just to make sure, and then you don't get a zillion emails stacked up. So as you can see, here's my inbox, and I've got 24 emails. They're all on this first page. If you have more than, I think, 50, you'll have to go to the next page, but I don't like having very many emails in my inbox. So first things first, you can tell which of your emails you've opened and read if they are grayed out. So this email I already opened and read, and this email I haven't yet. So if I click on it, and I go into it, it's telling me I have a new Google Classroom assignment from Ms. Painter's class. Now when I go back to my inbox, they are both grayed out. So it tells me right off the bat if I've opened and read this email or not. Okay. Now I have a ton of emails that say new assignment. These are all automatically sent to me from Google Classroom. So maybe you like getting these emails so when you know when you have a new assignment. I know I don't like getting these emails. I think it's too many and it overwhelms me. I know I have to go check my Google Classroom. So I'm gonna go to my Google Classroom and I'm gonna turn those emails off. So I'm gonna click on the three lines up in the top left corner. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom of all my classes and click settings. And I'm gonna scroll down to notifications. You can change the different kinds of notifications you get or you can turn them all off. So now I'm not gonna get any more emails from Google Classroom. Okay. Next thing is the trash button. So when I click on an email, I'm going to click the click the checkbox. I have all these options pop up and if I hover, it's going to tell me what they are. So that's just select all. That one says archives. That's kind of like throwing it in the trash. Report spam is a very big deal. So you only do that if you get an email from someone you don't know or someone that's trying to get information from you. Delete. It's a trash can. Mark as read snooze, add to your tasks, move to labels, and then there are more. So first things first, I think I just don't need this email. I already went and looked and maybe I already did this assignment. So I'm just going to click on the delete button and put it in the trash. If I did that by mistake, I can scroll down over here on the left and find the trash category and see that assignment right there. So if you throw something away, you can always go get it back. The next really important thing is if you have an email you know is important, you know you have something you have to do with it, you can click on the star. So now it's gonna pop up and you have actually have a whole folder over here that says starred and when you open it, all your starred emails will pop up. So I know that's important, I have to go do something for that email. And you can just as easily click unstar. Okay, the next one I think is the most important and that's organizing your emails with labels. Okay, so when I click on an email, maybe I wanna put this email into a label for all of Mrs. Painter's assignments. So I'm going to click on it to select it, and I'm gonna click move to. So I'm gonna move it out of my inbox. Here are the options it gives me right away, but I don't think those really make sense for me. So I am actually going to go to manage labels, and it's gonna take me to a new page, and show me these. So like, I don't think, so it's showing me I have an inbox. I have the starred and snooze. I'm gonna hide snooze, I don't need that. Um, I'm gonna keep sent um, and scheduled. I'll show, drafts I'll show, all mail I'll hide, spam I'll hide, trash I'll hide. Okay, um, so now I want to create a new label down here at the bottom. Now you have to really think about how you want to organize your emails. Do you want it to be, I need to do something with this email or this email I don't need anymore. Maybe this email is information for a test that I wanna save and look at later. Maybe this is emails from my Google Classroom. I'm gonna create a new label and I'm gonna call it Mrs. Painter. And I decided that I wanna put all of my emails from Mrs. Painter in this folder. So now I'm gonna go back to my inbox and I can click on actually many of them if I want. I can go down and click on all the emails from Mrs. Painter and I can say move to the Mrs. Painter folder. And now they are out of my inbox, but I can find them over here under the Mrs. Painter folder. And I can go through. The same thing applies where this one I've read and opened and these ones I've not opened yet. So I keep coming back to inbox. Um, the same goes for maybe Miss Paulson. So I'm going to select all the Miss Paulson emails and I'm going to say move to. This time I'm just going to say create new folder and I'm going to call it Miss Paulson. 
create. I like to have folders for things like from administration or keep because I know I'm gonna need it later or things from other teachers at school. Um, so you need to think about it and decide how you wanna organize your emails. Okay, next up would be Ms. Wagner. And I'm gonna create a new label again. Create. And then lastly, Mr. Chester. You probably won't have emails from all fourth third grade teachers, but that's the kind of thing we're working on. Let's see what else do I have in here. There's something for a technology assignment. So maybe I want to make a, a tech folder. Now here's something to worry about. Do not create so many folders that you're never gonna go look at them again because that's not helpful. Um, you wanna make sure your folders are really easy to use and helpful for you. Battle of the books, so I want to move to, maybe I want a battle of the books folder. For me, for Mrs. Heald, I like to not have any emails in my inbox. I know that's kind of crazy for some teachers. Some people have thousands of emails. But for me, if I have something to do, I leave it in my inbox until I do it. So like, for example, I got an email from the tech teacher that says you're missing an assignment. So I need to leave that in my inbox until I finish that assignment. And then here's a Zoom link that I wanna save for tech for later. So right now I'm leaving this email in here until I address it, until I do something with it. That is my system, okay? Um, so now maybe I want to reply to this teacher and let them know, oh, I just turned it in, thanks for letting me know. So the most there's two ways you can do it. There's a reply button right here, and there's a reply button right here. So I'm gonna click reply, and that means I'm automatically sending it to this teacher, and so their email address pops up. Um, so I like to treat email like a letter and not like a text message. So I like to start with a greeting with capital letters and punctuation. And several complete sentences. And then you should always say from. Jackson is my pretend email I'm in right now. And then I click send. So that's how you can reply right to an email and so it stays in the same thread is what we call it. There's another way you can write an email and that is the compose button. Compose is a fancy word for write. So I'm gonna click the big plus compose button and it's gonna give me a new message. Now here I can write lots of things going on here. The first box says recipients. That is a fancy word for who your email is going to. Do you see how it changes to two when I click in there? That flashing line is my cursor and it tells me that's where I'm going to type. Now here's a tip that I've learned. Do not type in the email address of who you're sending it to until last because otherwise you can accidentally send your message before you're ready. So I skip this box. Subject should be a word or phrase of what your email is about. So maybe I'm going to email Mrs. Heald about my assignment. So my subject is assignment. Again, I like my emails to be like letters. So I've got my greeting. <clears throat> I like to be specific about the first and then a closing. Um, there are lots of things down here you can do to add to your emails. Formatting options. So for example, I can click and drag to highlight my text and then I can make it a little bit bigger. I can change the font. You definitely want your emails to be easy to read. Always easy to read. You can change the colors. We talk about this in tech class. Do not make your text a color that is difficult to read. That is not helpful. <laughs> so always nice dark in colors. Um, you also want to check with your teacher. Some teachers don't want you to change all of these settings. Um, you can attach a file if you're um, working on something, insert a link. You can put in emojis. My rule for technology is to not put more than three emojis in any one email because um, otherwise it gets too crazy. We don't want to send an email that's just full of emojis. Maybe I want to put in, let's see. That's my ladies. Now the last thing I'm going to do 
is type in the recipient, the email address. So you have to know the email address of the person you're sending it to. Um, for teachers, this is their first initial and last name at prospectridgeacademy.org. For your fellow students, you have to get their email address if you want to send an email to your friend, and that's first name student number at prospectridgeacademy.org. Double, triple check the spelling of prospectridgeacademy.org. It is a long email address, and if you get even one letter wrong, it will not send to that person. Do you see how when I started typing it, it pops up? So it's giving a suggestion here. And you can see my picture, so you know that's me. And the last thing I do is click send. So take some time, go through your emails, check them every single day, and keep them organized. That way you won't miss anything important.